Let's look into leveraging integration suite. Hi, I'm Ian Thane, and welcome to another SAP Code Talk. And as I said right at the start, let's look about leveraging integration suite to develop enterprise grade integration scenarios. And with me, I have, again, Shilpa and a new person, Axel. Uh, welcome to you both. And if you'd like to spend a few minutes just to Shilpa, reintroduce yourself to the audience and Axel to introduce yourself for the first time. I'm Shilpa Witch, part of product management team for SAP Cloud Platform Integration Suite. And it's my privilege to join you again here on Code Talk today. Thanks, Ian. My name is Axel. I am working at SAP since 19 years. I was working in the areas of app services and process integration and then moved to the cloud platform integration development team. And since last year, I'm part of the product management team for the SAP cloud platform integration suite. So Shilpa, what does it mean to develop enterprise grade integration scenarios? Thanks for your question, Ian. And as you all know that integration is the backbone for digital transformation as well as to do in, uh, innovations, right? And enterprise grade integration scenarios helps to solve a variety of these integration problems. It helps to establish this integration as a discipline within an organization for developers, which will in turn enable it to operate on a well-defined basis of best practices, right? And then uh, it makes it, it ensures that all these integration scenarios are robust and run in, uh, run smoothly and seamlessly, right? So following are the couple of benefits which organization gets. The uh, number one is they define the guidelines, how developers should design their integration scenarios. This helps them to quick start their uh, integration journey altogether really quickly. It ensures uh, secure operations of an organization. And last but not the least, it saves you from the dominoes effect. This is nothing but a chain reaction. Let's say you have one integration flow, which is you know dependent on another, and the second one dependent on the third one, and so on. So let's say the first one is not that well designed. So it creates an impact on the second and this is a chain reaction which goes on. And finally, there is a disturbance at the, you know, the backbone itself. So these are a couple of points uh, which helps you, you know, to think in the direction of developing your enterprise grade integration flows. Thanks for that, Shilpa. Now, Axel, can you give me uh, an explanation of the guidelines or best practices? Yeah, sure, no problem. Let's start with simple readability. Um, it's about structuring the flow. It means uh, it's better to cluster the integration flow into uh, sub-processes instead of putting all the flow steps into one uh, huge integration process. By this, um, someone who's new to the project can easily understand the flow. Um, yeah. Um, also, when you have flow steps that are repeated in many uh, in many integration scenarios, then it makes sense, for example, to outsource them into a separate integration flow um, and connect all the other flows via a process direct adapted to this flow. Um, a second um, guideline is the so-called dependency relaxation to the external components. In uh, nowadays. All the, all the components are distributed across the internet in an integration scenario. And, and therefore, you have to expect um, yeah, that, that the latency goes up. Um, so it's important that you, that you are not too tight connected. Give, the, give the, your receiver time to respond. So that means put a proper timeout uh, into your integration scenario. Also, as you do not know what the external uh, participants will, will send you um, either as a request or also as a response. Make sure to validate the payload that you receive. Um, and in case, um, yeah, you also have to you also have to accept errors 
So uh, in this case, do a retry. Maybe it already helps because it was just a temporary issue. And error handling is in general very important. So always make sure that if needed, catch the exception. We do have the exception sub process for this. Make sure that you lock all the information that you need. Um, and maybe you can also inform someone via email or via a separate message um, where you can put all the information that are relevant and then you can do a proper um, error analysis, what went wrong. Um, another aspect is the memory um, or in general resource consumption. Like memory, this is a limited resource, so uh, it's important that an integration flow doesn't consume all the all the existing memories and then brings the other integration scenarios into trouble. Um, so therefore, use streaming wherever possible, or when you have a large payload, cut it into slices and then process those little chunks. Um, by this, you you handle your your resources in a way better. Uh, way. Um, and also, usually you design and also test your integration scenario with a certain payload size or message size in mind. Um, and therefore, it's important that you also restrict um, senders from sending you larger payloads. You can do this in the sender channel um, by saying, okay, this is the maximum size of a payload and an attachment that I want to allow in this integration flow. And whenever um, the participants send something that is larger, they will get a um, response saying, OK, sorry, you, your message will not be processed. That's, um, that's for resource consumption. And as I spoke about testing, I mean, testing is always important. Um, and not just the sunny day scenario, but also like put your scenario into into any kind of situations. Someone is sending something wrong. Uh, someone is sending a too large payload. S uh, test with realistic data. Test with uh, the volume that you really expect in a in a peak load. Um, and by this, you will then realize um, if your scenario is robust enough and will, yeah, so to say, not endanger any other integration scenario. Thanks for that. I'm going to go back to you now, Shilpa. What are the right ingredients uh, of enterprise-grade APIs? Uh, thanks, Johan. Uh, and as you know, for an application developer, if you consider their day-to-day -day operations or the day-to-day -day life, uh, they are continuously building or get, uh, are involved in developing uh, conversational AIs or chatbots or let's say mobile application, right? Behind the scene, it's just the APIs and it is always the APIs. So these APIs gets the right result to uh, you. And let's say you have a chatbot, it interacts with the end user, but behind the scene, the API gets the right result to the user. So APIs are really the heart of any application. It, so that's why it becomes very, very important to know more on how to make a great API. So it starts with, uh, I will just talk about three principles, the three key ingredients and it starts with a consistent data model across your line, lines of businesses. Second one is the simplicity and the third one is the API documentation. Just uh, to double click on each one of them, having said that, the consistent data model uh, across your lines of businesses, I would take an example here, uh, one uh, where you know you define your business partner. So the attributes that these business partner or object have has to be really consistent and also as aligned as possible. This improves and reduces the complexity which a consumer of this API you know, have to go through. When you talk about the simplicity, uh, it is very important that your APIs have has the sandbox environment or the experience where you know, the consumer can come and test your APIs. Then uh, also it becomes very important that you have the snippets, the you know, the snapshots to quickly get started, the SDKs in place so that your uh, developer community or the user of your APIs quickly get started with. The third uh, and the differentiating factor between uh, an API and a great or 
you know, a rich API is its documentation. Uh, an API documentation should have the business scenario or a use case. Why is this API uh, written and what is it trying to solve? Also, it is very important to mark the error handling there, the request which it handles, all the call post put, delete all the calls which it handles and also the authentication and authorizations which it helps to support. So, uh, and last but not the least, it is very important to put together the complete version management and also uh, the change management for this API. So these are the couple of uh, tips which will help you to design rich APIs or, a, or an enterprise grade APIs. And finally back to you, Axel. How can customers find out about the best practices? Oh yeah, that's pretty easy. Um, when you're in your inter cloud platform integration tenant, you have in the upper right corner, the icon um, where you see the about, where the, the version information and so on. And there you also have a link to the design guidelines. Um, and also for, for APIs, you can go to sap.com and then you can search, for example, best practices for enterprise APIs. But in addition, um, all our documentation contains a lot of information, useful information, and also there are plenty of blogs out there which, uh, which helps the user to design the integration scenarios and APIs in a really robust manner. Well, thank you very much, guys, for joining me, and I hope to have you again soon on Code Talk. Thank you, everyone, for listening, and thanks, Jan, for having us here. Thank you.